Hello guys. Uh, so I wanted to make a quick video on how I write a short flash fiction piece. I'm a strong believer on macro versus micro. So I think the big macro picture, the big part should be focused on first before you start worrying about the micro, you know, like the spelling, sentence structure, all that random stuff that doesn't necessarily need to be focused on until the final draft. Usually what I do, especially with like flash fiction, which is around a thousand words or less. So flash fiction needs to be short and sweet and needs to have a really impactful like theme that p packs a punch at the end. And the ending kind of ultimately solidifies that theme. So the theme is very important, especially in flash fiction. So flash fiction can't really be mimic uh, type of fiction. You can't just copy an experience and, and hopefully that gets the job done. I do think good theme comes from reality. Portray reality, that theme should come through. Flash fiction, you really want to keep the whole theme in mind. Um, every word, everything is pointing towards that theme. And I know Edgar Allan Poe, one of the great short story writers, he thinks everything should point towards that theme, every word. I used a readsy prompt. Character discovers something while raking leaves in their neighborhood. That really just gives you maybe a setting, uh, maybe a little bit of plot. Doesn't really give you anything about character, doesn't give you anything about theme. What I choose the theme, that'll help me dictate what type of character I need. I say do macro to micro. So next I kind of just create a paragraph of all the ideas that I think. So leaves fall in the cold. So I'm just trying to think about, okay, so raking up leaves. Why is he raking up leaves? What kind of theme can I draw from this? Leaves fall in the cold, dead tree droppings, dark themes, picking them up to make a aesthetically pleasing yard. And the tree drops the leaves and the tree looks dead. And you're picking up the droppings of the tree and then you're hoping that tree comes back to life after winter vegetation, decomposing organic matter, and I just kind of listed off words that I thought was interesting that I could use within that story that would help kind of solidify the theme that I'm going for. Ranting, my macro concepts of what I want to kind of incorporate. It's more just kind of word vomit. Few, it's futile because you have to do it every year. It's kind of like the Sisyphus, you know, you push up a boulder and then it comes back down. And then it's just only to give that outwardly aesthetic, pleasing view of a house when leaves naturally fall there anyway. And then the next part, right, so I got your paragraph. So macro concept at the very top. Dive in in a little deeper, a little deeper. So I'm starting to get a little more micro. Now I have a character. So I have the man rakes the leaves, it's cold and windy dead trees, crows, he just got divorced, right? So now I have a character, now I have a psychological dilemma, his wants and needs, he just got divorced, he's feeling depressed, and he wants to not feel depressed anymore. And he's burying himself in that work of raking those leaves. No sound of the kids there, right? So all these can be used. Um, there's no solidifying a theme yet. I'm just kind of throwing down all these ideas. Trees, the wind, the leaves, the rake, the black bag, and the noisy, nosy neighbor. They're going to be in first person. So I just read Gogol's The Dead Souls, and there's a really long extended metaphor, which I thought is really, really interesting. So I wanted to incorporate that in this story. All right, so I was just going to read that, uh, that extended metaphor that was in Gogol's Dead Souls. So the black tailcoats flickered, fluttered separately and in clusters this way and that just as flies fluttered over dazzling white chunks of sugar on a hot July day when the old housekeeper hacks and divides it into sparkling lumps in front of the open window. All the children look on as they gather about her, watching with curiosity and movement of her rough hands while the air, airy squadrons of flies that the light air has raised, fly boldly in, compete mistresses, and taking advantage of the old woman's pure blindness and of the sun troubling her eyes, spread all over the dainty morsels here separately, there in dense clusters. I kind of liked that world within a world, you know, and this is from a party, right? So the guy's just at a party and he sees these tailcoats and they're flickering about. Now this other world, this otherly world kind of opens up. That was really interesting. You know, I kind of wanted to incorporate that into a story and that was Really the whole reason I wanted to make a short story was I wanted to incorporate that kind of technique. I stumbled upon Reezy and decided to use one of those those prompts because it's fun to submit and compete and 
I mean, the likelihood of winning is very low, but it's still fun and it's motivating. I think that's the hardest part is finding motivation. So once I finished that paragraph, then I actually dived straight into the story, right? Straight into the scene, straight into first person. I describe, you know, kind of what's going on, introduce the character, introduce his wants and needs. I really only have a page, page, a handwritten. And from there, I make these little notes on the sides, um, things I missed or things I want to add when I transfer it to the computer. I don't even consider this the first draft. This is a very rough draft. And then when I transfer it to the computer, that's when I start worrying about those micro concepts of word choice, sentence structure, and anything else that I wasn't focusing on when I was writing it with my hand. That's when I can kind of really make it seem like I knew what I was doing all along, right? As Neil Gaiman says. And when I put it into the computer, the first draft, <clears throat> then I go through and I make sure, you know, I, I refine it. My mom, my mom's a beta reader and I have her read it. She'll tell me what uh, I should fix. We finished, uh, you know, my first draft, it's in the computer. I sent it to my mom and she tore it apart, right? <laughs> Tough love. Give me some good advice and some things to fix. And I'll fix those and then I'll submit it to see how that goes. And if anything, it's a nice story that I made, an artistic outlet, and I'm gonna add it to my collection of short stories that I hopefully am gonna publish in the future uh, called The Darkling Fr Thrush. The Darkling Thrush is a novella, and I'm gonna have around 24 to 25 short stories along with that novella. So it'll be A Darkling Thrush and 25 other disappointments. I'm calling my short stories disappointments. <laughs> if you like my videos, please subscribe. I just make videos whenever I want. And if you have any ideas, let me know.